Welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Thanks to, to join to review what we have new in this uh, chapter. And if you want to go through this chapter, I recommend to view another uh, video, another short video, call it about Purview. In that one, I talk about data leak vectors. And in this session, I will show another way to discuss with the customers how we can implement security. As I told in every uh, in past uh, recorded sessions, in past uh, webinar, Purview is a kind of puzzle with uh, different pieces, and we need to understand how all these pieces work together. And in this session, I want to share with you something that normally I use as a kind of framework to work with Microsoft Purview and other technologies related to data governance. Let's go together in this uh, trip. Let me continue. OK, when we talk about Microsoft uh, Purview and data protection, in this case, we will talk about use cases and how we can build those use cases. The first thing is we need to understand how we can take this journey to compliance. What do we need for compliance? We need to understand all the components and how those components work together. The first thing, if we saw, this is the product group diagram with all the components from Microsoft Purview. We have several components on Microsoft Purview, no matter if that is Microsoft 365 or Azure. In all the cases, we have several, but, and it happens a lot, that providers, partners, start working with a, some a specific feature, but they are not working all of this as a kind of puzzle. That's why I, I, I mean with all of this. Okay, maybe you saw in the past uh, video all about data leak vector, where I explain what happened in a common environment and how we need to understand all the components work together. In this case, I will talk about capabilities and a strategy. And the most important point, understand that the tool as the tool is not too important. That's our skills, our some hours and technical deep dive in, in some configurations. But in general, we will talk more about process, procedures, roles, responsibilities, and scenarios. The first thing that and in another video, I will go a little more deep dive in, in this one. Is understand what's mean information uh, governance or data governance. Normally, when you start a project in any of those silos, uh, the project start having several road blockers because it's not covering all the possible problems related to platform, security information, compliance, monitoring. We are not clear about the strategic alignment that coming by the market, the organization vision, and laws and regulations. We will go more in deep in another uh, session, but here this is very important to start understanding the rest uh, of topics, but let's go to, to see how we can confront this kind of uh, cases, the implementation of Microsoft Purview based on use cases. And as I mentioned previously, we need to talk about process, procedures, roles, responsibilities, and permissions. To define or how we can go forward, it doesn't exist a, a unique receipt. Every time I can see different people doing different ways to, to implement. But let me share, based on my experience, how we can go forward in a Microsoft Purview implementation, having in mind other technologies that are related. The first thing is understand that we need to identify the kind of users that we have in our organization. Normally, the concept persona. How we can organize our users in different groups to identify through 
which kind of access channel they can connect through corporate network only, VPN, international connections, some uh, BDIs, cloud VPN, several different options. Then we need to understand the, the platform, which they will use to connect Windows machine, corporate devices, personal devices, third party applications, Microsoft applications. We need to understand very well and based on that, control the applications that are used by this kind of user through this access channel. Then the services that are, are available through these platforms, connecting through these channels for this kind of users. The next step is identifying the information assets that are available or you will access through these services connected through this platform, through this channel for this kind of, kind of users. And finally, with who we are sharing that information. Okay, how we can do this? The first thing is we need to understand how can we organize our users, employees, contractor, administrator, external administrator, VIP, VIP collaborators. We need to work to define those concept of persona. Then we need to identify from where and which channel we are using to connect. It's required that any people from our organization connect from any part of the planet of the world. Maybe we can focus to connect only from our region, only for our continent or only for our uh, country and make some exceptions in some cases. When we talk about which kind of devices or applications are consuming our services, we need to define if we are able to support personal devices or mobile devices, or we will work only with corporate devices. The same, same happens with native applications, third-party applications, browser, Microsoft Office applications, contractor devices, BDIs, and more. That is why I, I call it platform. Then the services. Which services are we using for what? Another big deal that every time that you assign a license, an E3 or E5, several services are added to the user. And if you are not clear about all those uh, services, how you can manage or admin or control what is happening in those services, say something like forms, planner, to do a stream. If we are not able to control uh, that or admin those services, it's recommend to don't enable those services. You can assign the, the license, but do, don't enable, enable those uh, services. That permit to reduce that security footprint. Then we need to identify our information asset previously in the previous uh, short video, I was explaining on data leak vectors about the data classifiers, about sensitive information types, document fingerprint, trainable classifiers, Excel data match. Those tools permit us to identify information asset. But additionally to that, we have the sensitivity labels that permit us to classify and in some cases protect the data. For that reason, how can we recognize that asset? And in this sample, I am using some classification. But again, we have all related to data classifiers as well. Finally, but not the, the less important, is who is accessing and using our information. If you review all the past uh, reports related to data lake or fraud, you will see that always, rounding the numbers, 75% of the fraud and leaks have an internal component, an internal user that is part of that. For that reason, the first one that we need to review is the same organization. Then we can go to provider, customers, government partner, external entities. We need to work each of these points with our customers to identify all these components in this 
<laughs> process. Then, with that information, we are able to create different scenarios. This is a kind of resume. The services use it, the devices, channel, and assets related to each scenario. In some cases, we can create internal scenarios or external scenarios. I will show only one sample for, for this one. And this is one related to chair. How I will share with internal or external people. I will set the kind of users, the channels, the platform, the services, information assets, and sharing. But the most important, and based in all these process, procedures, roles, responsibilities, and permissions, based on this framework that I want to share with you, the next step is identify the security enablers for each of those components. And I will say, okay, for kind of user, I will use conditional access. I will use Dynamics Groups, Microsoft Entri Entitlement, Active Directory, BDIs, MDM, MAM, Licensing, Information Protection, Retention, DLP, Sharing Controls, MDCA. This permit to identify all the components, not only the Microsoft Purview components. As I mentioned in a previous uh, short video and in this one, to have a complete data governance, we need to understand all the components. Here is a big puzzle with several pieces that we need to understand how those pieces work together. In this case, I am using a kind of semaphore to say, okay, on my environment, conditional access that I'm using for kind of user to manage channel or platform is right implemented and I feel that is okay. But maybe on Dynamics Group or Microsoft Entry Entitlement or DLP or Information Protection is something that I am just starting working and is not complete. Licensing or sharing control is not properly set and I need to work on those. And the rest, I am not starting yet and I need to work. That permit me to have a complete overview about what is happening on my environment, go back to that data leak vector diagram and see how I can control those leak vectors using the different Microsoft technologies or other third-party technologies that can help in this data governance trip. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, video today. Feel free to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.